The six female southern white rhinos arrived in San Diego with high expectations. I remember, you know, going over to Africa to be the first one from our team to meet them. Steve Metzler remembers that long airline flight from South Africa in 2015. The crates carried more than just rhinoceroses. They carried hope that there was still a chance to keep the closely related northern white rhino from going extinct. There are animals that have been here for millions of years, and uh, we're at the verge of seeing them disappear. After all of that longevity, we're the reason that they're starting to, to disappear. Poaching snuffed out the wild populations, and age is taking its toll on the survivors in captivity. There are only three living northern whites. The last one to live at the safari park died in 2015. Keepers open a heavy metal gate in an off-exhibit area. Marco Zeno shouts an encouraging word to the largest rhino in the group. Good girl, why don't you come out over here? The animal lumbers from one enclosure to another. Amani is the first of six females to be inseminated artificially with southern white sperm. If it works, it's a major step towards saving the northern white rhino species. Give me your nose. Zeno pokes an open hand through a thick wire fence encouraging an up-close visit. It's remarkable that these animals that were essentially wild when they came in, after just about three months, were hand-feeding and, and being really calm around people and have no reason to be afraid, and, and now they're really great. They do anything we need them to. That includes standing still for shots and taking blood. The animals have also been taught to accept regular ultrasounds. Livia plods into a secure chute. Once a week, the Institute for Conservation Research's Barbara Durant and Parker Pennington examine the rhino's reproductive tract. But this ultrasound isn't what you might expect. There is no application of cold jelly as the doctor manipulates the ultrasound wand on the outside of the tummy. This wand is encased in plastic piping, and it goes inside the animal. Pennington moves the device into place just above the rhino's narrow and curvy reproductive tract. She looks at the portable ultrasound screen and snaps pictures as needed. I'm going to measure some of those, too. Durant says the idea is to regularly check in on the animal's reproductive organs. So we go in with an ultrasound probe, and we look at the uterine horns, we look at the ovaries, and we're looking at the structures on the ovaries. And the structures we're looking for are the follicles, which are the growing eggs, the structure that holds the egg. Durant is, in essence, writing the book on the rhino's reproductive cycle, because this research isn't happening anywhere else. Uh, you see this? That's fluid in there. And there's hope that what they learn will allow for an unprecedented successful artificial insemination. As the researchers strain to get the information they need, Livia calmly munches on treats offered by her trainer. There is no sedation. About 20 minutes after it started, the exam is finished. So what we're trying to do with that information is not only just document what the estrous cycle of the rhinoceros is, but we're also trying to optimize our artificial insemination techniques by doing the insemination when we know the time is exactly right. It'll be a couple of months before researchers find out if the first attempted insemination on Imani works. Durant's plan is for all six rhinos to have successful births from the process. She wants proven success before she attempts to implant a more precious embryo. Everything that we're doing now is leading up to having a female southern white rhino that can receive and gestate a northern white rhino embryo. That's possible because researchers have access to the genetic building blocks required to create a fertilized embryo. We have the cell lines from 12 northern white rhinos. There are only three living northern white rhinos, but we have cell lines from 12. So we have enough genetic diversity. All those genomes, all those cell lines have had their genomes um, examined. And so we know that there's enough genetic diversity in those cell lines to create a viable population of northern white rhinos. As Durant works to perfect the artificial breeding techniques, other researchers are figuring out how to unlock the zoo's genetic repository of northern white rhino cells. Those cells are housed in the frozen zoo, nitrogen-filled tanks that house cells from thousands of animals. 
scientists will need to resolve the reproductive and genetic obstacles for the northern white rhino to get a second chance. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.